Hello and welcome to the CircuitPython Weekly for March uh, 18th, <laughs> 2019. My name is Scott and I work on CircuitPython, uh, sponsored by Adafruit. Uh, CircuitPython is uh, the easiest way to program on microcontrollers, as our website says. Um, it's super easy. You just plug in a board running CircuitPython. It shows up as a drive with Python code on it and you edit that save and it restarts. Um, so this meeting uh, is a gathering of all folks interested in CircuitPython. Um, everybody is welcome to join the meeting either in lurking mode. So lurking is just want to listen. You don't want to participate. Uh, folks can tell us in the text chat that that's what they're doing. Uh, if you don't want to speak, you're welcome to be in text only mode. Let us know that as well and we'll read it off. And if you're in full on voice mode, uh, jump in the ch channel with us and we'll get to you when the time comes. Um, that's on our Discord server, which is uh, at, available at the URL adafru.it slash Discord. Um, we'll, get, we'll get you into our Discord channel. We'll, we're usually only in the voice channel during the meeting, which happens Mondays at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. And again, everybody's welcome to join that. Um, the meeting is run in five parts. Uh, first, we have a community news section, uh, followed by our State of Circuit Python, which is an analytical uh, look at uh, the numbers for Circuit Python. After that, we have hug reports, which we do as a round robin um, for a chance to say, hey, uh, so-and-so, you did a great job. Thank you for the work that you've done. Uh, really emphasizing uh, what has been awesome in the community kind of in the last week. But if you've missed a meeting, feel free to uh, say thank you to people for longer ago. Um, after that, we'll do uh, status updates, which is kind of a, circ or a software engineering sort of uh, stand up where uh, you take a brief minute to talk about what you've been working on and what you plan on working on in the coming week. And that's a really good way for um, people to be aware of what you're working on and give you tips and tricks about the, the work that you're trying to do. Um, uh oh, <laughs> I broke Adabot. Um, so state of CircuitPython might be a little less interesting. Um, and then lastly, we have in the weeds, which is a section of just open discussion. So if you have any topics that you think might be longer form, um, feel free to ask us about it there. Um, and we'll, we'll just chat. Um, so that's what uh, the in the weeds section is. Um, this, it, this meeting is recorded, so be aware of that if you are on the voice channel or in the text channel. Both of those are recorded and posted both on YouTube and my diode zone. Uh, the YouTube also gets the audio stripped out and sent out as a, as a podcast. So if you're a podcast person, uh, be aware that that's available as well. And with that, uh, we're going to go to our first section, uh, Community News and Phil. Hello. How are you all doing today? Good. Yay. <laughs> that, that's mostly my audio check. This guy <laughs> says, hey, how you doing today? Uh, first up, so every form of microcontroller in effort has a day. Um, this weekend, Lady Ada and I did our historic look of the world of Arduino. So uh, I was reminded once again that uh, we have a plan to do a circuit Python day now that circuit Python is uh, more than a couple of years old. So right now, the tentative date is going to be 8.8. And whatever year it is so um mostly because it looks like snakes and i made the graphics mm -hmm. but um if there's any other ideas uh let us know um 8 8 that would be august 8th i think it's the thursday this year and um it would just be celebrating all the things that we do around circuit python on one particular day and uh kind of like we do every week but um as circuit python has become more popular more people using it more boards are out there more companies are doing things with it more people are making their own um, versions and, and builds that you can see in our new site, circuitpython.org slash downloads. Um, one, um, okay, let's see, we did get one, two, two, and five, five look uh, more like six. Okay, those are in the running. Um, so we'll see. Uh, two, two, and five, five. Two, two, we'd have to wait a year. Five, five, that's come up pretty fast. So that's the only thing. <laughs> five, five is Cinco de Mayo as well, right? Yeah, but I, but I do, but I, but I do like this. Uh, may, maybe we would um, uh, change it. Uh, maybe we do 8-8 eight, eight this year, and then we do other snake-looking dates. Uh, that might be a theme. There's no um, reason we can't have more than one. You know, in my life, Circuit Python Day is every day. But, <laughs> um, 
but anyways, that, that's a tentative one. And maybe we, if, if there's dates that are that look more visually appealing, uh, maybe we would switch it up for the next year. But um, August gave us enough time, so that's what I was thinking. Okay, mm -hmm. um, next up. Uh, this is really exciting, uh, and I wanted to put this in community notes. Uh, Max Holiday is a PhD student at Stanford, and Max has done the SAM32. It was a CircuitPython board. You can see it in downloads. We still have to give him maybe to update it, so there's a photo in there and some mm -hmm. text. But also, um, Max is working with this, the small satellite org folks and another person and an entire NASA effort, and they decided to go with CircuitPython. And I want to quote Max, CircuitPython provides an approachable and logical means of conducting science with hardware. Paired with low-cost hardware shown to work in space, we can enable a new generation to question and explore the unknown. With the necessary, quote, satellite stuff already baked in, students can spend their time trying something new rather than reinventing the wheel. So I thought that was really neat. I did a full write-up, and then uh, I asked Max to send more information, and Max did. This is in our newsletter. Um, this is really, really neat. If um, you've seen this like small satellite and micro satellite trend, um, seeing CircuitPython in space, of course, is exciting for us. But students being able to imagine their projects in orbit um, and being able to do something is really neat. So check that out. Those are in the notes, and it's also in the newsletter. Um, some folks are letting us know when they're speaking at events, and that's helpful because usually the conference organizers like that, the person speaking likes that, and we also like that. So let us know if you're speaking at any particular user group, meetup, makerspace, hackerspace, um, if there's anything to do with Python on hardware from MicroPython to uh, Blinka Python on um, Raspberry Pi or whatever new variant of Linux boards are out there, um, let us know and we'll um, get the word out. And uh, we also uh, did a blog post, and we have that in our newsletter. And lastly, um, I'm going to start chipping away at some of the things on circuitpython.org, our site, particularly the circuitpython.org slash download section, um, taking photos of uh, things this week of boards that I wanted to get good photos in, because we have the ability to take great photos. So why not have great photos of these great boards? But if you see things in there that need text, which there's a few, um, you can update it. I usually grab the text that's off the site directly. Um, so like a Nordic thing, they usually have a little bit of text. Um, and I put that in there. And then that would be a pull request. And then one of us will review it mm -hmm. and add it. So that's pretty much uh, the community news for this week. Full speed ahead. And thank you, everyone, for making this out of this world Circuit Python in space. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to sing the pigs in space. Song. I see what you did there. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Phil. That's all I got. Awesome. All right. Uh, we'll go on to the state of Circuit Python. Uh, this is a chance for us to take a kind of an analytical look at the health of the project, both from the lens of uh, the core uh, C code underneath Circuit Python and all the libraries that sit on top. Um, I just, I totally forgot to pull these numbers this morning, so I just grabbed them, and it turns out I broke the the automated process for this, uh, because I showed some auth keys on the stream on Friday that I did, and I deleted it immediately so people wouldn't have access, but it turns out this Adabot script uses that. So, um, these notes are a few days old from when it la ran last, um, so if any, for all of these, those, for those of you who did all the awesome work over the weekend, sorry, but that won't be counted in here. Um, but uh, we'll just go over these numbers and I'll fix it for next week. So um, sorry for the gap. Um, that's just a note. Uh, so overall, uh, mind the gap. Yes, exactly. Um, as of, I believe this, these numbers are taken from Friday because I broke it on Friday. So um a week ago, the week prior, uh, starting on Friday, uh, 35 pull requests merged, 14 different authors, um, Corey Osman, uh, Davis Stills, Dan Halbert, Jay Reese, Brent Rue, Cedar Grove Studios, Maker Melissa, Jerry Needell, uh, Sedacious, Yumi3, uh, myself, Jay Raber, Anik Data, and Lady Ada. That's a huge number. That's awesome. I think there is some overlap in the previous meeting, um, but that's still really impressive. Um, that was with seven different reviewers as well. Uh, Issues-wise, we had 24 closed issues by seven people and 15 open by 12 people. So uh, we're very much in this mode of uh, burning down our in on our issue count so that we can get 4.0 out the door. Um, so that's overall. Uh, I won't spend super long on that since it's a little out of date. Uh, Core-wise, core um, we had six pull requests merged as of Friday. Uh, from three different authors, including Jay Reese. 
uh, two reviewers, Dan and myself, uh, eight open pull requests. Uh, those are in the notes, but they're also a little out of date. Um, check uh, Adafruit Circuit Python repo for the, the latest. Uh, we had 10 closed issues by two people and seven open by six people. So uh, thank you to everyone who's doing testing for 4.0. Uh, we really appreciate it. 153 open issues with a link in the notes on that. Um, Milestone-wise, we have uh, 19 open issues. I think we're at 20 at this point um, for 4.0, so we're working on getting that down. Uh, the nature of those issues has definitely changed to be more uh, more bug-focused, which is good. Um, and those are uh, relatively small fixes, but uh, very impactful, too, as I'm sure Dan will talk about a little bit later. Um, and we have nine issues not assigned to Milestone, so uh, we should take a look at that as well because we want to make sure and uh, catch all the issues that need to go into 4.0. Um, the, other, the other milestones are less important, but um, making sure that we don't miss something that is is <laughs> catastrophic for 4.0, like uh, whatever the issue with Beta 4 was, uh, it would be good. Um, download stats-wise, um, if you want to see a breakdown by board, check the link here. Uh, for bait, these are for 312. We had a total of 8,331 downloads, and uh, beta 3 got 400 downloads. Uh, again, we had beta 4 released and beta 5 out on Sunday, so that number is a little old. Um, and lastly, uh, we had a breakdown by language. Uh, again, check the notes for that. Um, notes are available linked through, we have a, a GitHub repository for notes, and we put it in the description of the video as well. So, um, check that out uh and again you see the breakdown of the different languages for for 400 or for the 400 uh beta 3 downloads and uh let's go to katney for libraries updates thanks scott mm -hmm. so uh this uh week ish um we had 29 pull requests merged which is amazing um 12 authors which is fantastic uh cory osman which um their first was last week, I believe, and I've not seen Yumi 3 before, um, or Jay Raber, I think. Uh, so thank you to people who are joining us for the first time and contributing. Uh, that's super fantastic. And we had five reviewers. There are currently 19 open pull requests. That is probably about accurate. Um, we had 14 issues closed by six people and eight open by six people. So we are down a bit, which is excellent. And we have 81 open issues. All those are in the notes, um, as well as there's a link to the CircuitPython library tracking issue, which is on the CircuitPython repo. Um, it gets updated with a more expanded version of these notes that has links to every repo that has any kind of issue on it. Um, and those, a lot of those are good first issues. Um, so take a look at those if, those are, if, if you're interested in um, beginning to contribute. Um, and you don't know where to start, uh, take a look at some of those. Um, and if you are unsure about how to work with Git or GitHub, we have a guide for that. And also we're available all week on Discord to help you out. Um, we want to see you, um, we want to see you contribute. And so we will definitely be, make ourselves available to help you um, figure all that out. And that's where we are with the libraries. Awesome, that's totally cool. And it's great to see so many people be involved in uh, Katni, thank you for your your role in really leveling other folks up. It's awesome. Um, yeah, it's I'm it's it's amazing to see it actually working. I know, right? <laughs> um, that's a great transition. Uh, we have a section every week where we can say thank you to people for being awesome, just like Katni has been awesome. Um, it's called Hug Reports. Uh, it's to counter the uh, potentially negative bug reports. Um, so this is uh, positive things that folks have done in the community. Uh, and we really just want to say, uh, just take some time to say thank you. Uh, we do it as a round robin. So uh, we'll go in alphabetical order, starting from myself uh, in the voice channel. Um, if you are lurking and just want to be skipped when we do that round robin, but want to lurk or listen in, tell us you're lurking if you haven't already. Um, and if you're text only, uh, what we'll do is you'll you can put your text in the notes or in the in the text chat, and I'll read those off. Um, and with that, oh, I forgot to take a time code. I'm off my game, um, but I will do one for myself. Uh, I will start uh, as an example. 
Um, yeah, Maker Melissa, you're welcome to do hug reports and status update at the same time. Um, and let yeah, if it, if it's like within the next few minutes, let me know. We can we can jump ahead to you as well. Um, so uh, first and foremost, I wanted to say thank you to Drew Fistini, uh, who's been in the meeting a few times. Uh, Drew is a huge open source advocate in general, um, and he reached out to me to talk about getting CircuitPython on more boards, uh, specifically one that has a CMD51 and an ICE40, uh, which is really cool. Um, so that's really neat. Maker Melissa, how about you go after me um, so shortly? Um, so thank you to Drew. Uh, I want to say thank you to Kevin uh, J. Walters uh, specifically for pushing the bounds of the audio work that we have in CircuitPython. Uh, I mentioned the video that they made uh, about the Circuit Playground uh, and different waveforms, uh, but really had some really good insight into the, the finer details that we need in CircuitPython to make audio really shine, uh, like being able to like know when a sample is finished and switch to a different sample smoothly instead of kind of with a jolt. Um, third, thank you to Maker Melissa for just helping everywhere. Um, so many different uh, pull request reviews and pull requests and uh, issue fixes and helping people on Discord. Uh, you've been amazing. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, thank you to Jerry N and Lady Ada for tweaking the display APIs after I changed them. Uh, they should be set now, so hopefully we won't have to chase any new APIs. Um, thank you uh, to Dan for leading the bug hunting uh, over the weekend, and especially everyone else for helping. Uh, th so I just want to say Jerry, Melissa, Kevin, uh, Deshipu, and uh, UHR Heber. Um, there's this amazing pull request, uh, 1649, where it's... Um, posed by Dan, but then just like a bunch of people helping and debugging and confirming that it works. So uh, I was reading that li last night and it just made like, I was totally gone this weekend and it's just like gave me the warm and fuzzies. So uh, thank you to everybody for, for being awesome. Uh, and then lastly, uh, thank you to Katni for PyCon planning. Um, it's coming up quickly and I've been so heads down that I've really not had to worry about it. Um, had had the time to worry about it. But I also know that Katni has been thinking a lot about it, and I expect uh, that it's going to be even better than it was last year because of her awesome work. So, uh, Katni, keep on rocking. Uh, very excited for PyCon. And with that, uh, we're going to skip uh, out of order so that we can get Maker Melissa before she leaves. So go ahead, Ma Melissa. Hi. Um, OK. Um, first of all, I wanted to here. Finding my here. Uh, first, I wanted to give a hug to you, Scott, for live streaming the CircuitPython Beta 4 release and sharing your Game Boy. And then I wanted to give a hug to Dan and Jerry for um, being on the ball about the file system issues and getting Beta 5 out there pretty quickly. Um, I wanted to give a hug to PT and Lady Ada for their excellent Arduino Day broadcast. I wanted to give one to Deshi Poo for quickly reviewing my tickets and um, one Jay Raver, who, for going back and forth with me to figure out the SPI bugs and the BME280 and BME680 pull requests. And then for my status report, last week I went and I debugged some issues with uh, SPI for the pull request for the BME280 and uh, tested SPI on the um, pull request for the BME 680. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a bunch of work on my Pi Portal calculator. Um, I'm, well, I know Lady Ada was going to be buttons or something, so I kind of like held off on that. Mm -hmm. To working on display I/O stuff, um, I wrote a simple test for the ILI 9340 um, using display I/O. Um, I started subclassing the ST7735 display so it could work more like the Arduino one and work with a, more of a variety of different displays. Hmm. Um, I finished up my RA8875 guide, but I want to go over it again before submitting it. And I noticed that the preview isn't working, and I'm not sure if it's an issue with the guide or learn itself. And then I just I tested several other miscellaneous issues. 
and this week I'm going to get my guide submitted and any corrections made. I'm going to work on getting some more uh, display I.O. drivers written, and I want to get uh, some more work done on my Pi Portal calculator, and I want to try and finish up the Featherwing starting with the Ada Logger since it's the last non-display I.O. dependent Featherwing. Mm. That's amazing. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. All right. Um, let's go back into order to TG Techie. Hello. Uh, just a hug for the community. All right. Group hug from TG Techie. OK, Brent. I have a few hug reports. Um, one to Jerry for figuring out an issue with a learn guide. Um, moments after I blog really quick and let mm -hmm. me report it to the people I needed to, um, to Scott, Phil, and Justin for circuitpython.org. I'm watching it grow, and I used it this week, and it was perfect, and it did exactly what it did, should. So that's great. Um, Katni for the soldering marathon for PyCon. I watched the time lapse, and I... I'm a sucker for a good time lapse, and it was really good. <laughs> and I'm, I'm really excited for PyCon. Um, and Scott for the Game Boy and Circuit Python for Beta for Stream. It was a really interesting stream to watch. Awesome, thanks, Brent. Uh, Carter is lurking, so Seagrover is text only. So go ahead, Seagrover. Grover says, uh, group hug to the team and community. Been on the receiving end of a lot of helpful advice, guidance, and patience this past week. Also, thanks to Lady Ada for challenging me to create a classic MIDI UART library, uh, borrowed almost completely from her MIDI USB library. And for the accompanying and steep GitHub learning curve. Whew. Awesome. Thank you, Seagrover. Uh, next is... Uh, Charles Bernard, who is lurking, but says hug to all on 4.0. And then we'll go to Dan. Hi, everybody. So um, thanks to everybody who helped me with all the file system stuff, both in general and on the NRF. That's Maker Melissa and Jerry and Urheber. And... Um, then thanks also, once I tried to decide I was going to make another release on Sunday morning, Summersoft, Sedacious, Jerry, and Maker Melissa also helped me because there were some, like, the tra Travis broke, and they told me the possible reason for it. And um, also CircuitPython.org was having strange issues. So we submitted some bugs, which are now fixed. About that stuff, that was all really helpful. Um, thanks to Scott for continuing to work on Display.io. There's a lot of work uh, that's gone into that. and. It's moving at a fantastic pace and also fixing this long-standing movie direct, uh, directory into itself bug, which is nice to take off the list. Um, and thanks to Scott and Justin Cooper and Phil for uh, working on CircuitPython.org, which is basically just fantastic. Now, I instead of pointing people at this weird GitHub releases page with 300 things on it <laughs> and making that person find it themselves. Now I can just point directly to a board on CircuitPython.org or something. And I've already done that two or three times on Discord or in the forums. It's a real pleasure. That's really wonderful. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Also, thanks to Scott for the release automation he did during the live feed on Friday, which is making it work more with CircuitPython. Um, some other people who have been submitted a bunch of bugs recently which have been very helpful and point out things that we need to fix for 4.0 include Rathmore, R Dagger, Kevin Walters again and Urheber. Uh, Kevin Walters as uh, Scott mentioned has been using PWM out in some interesting way on Circuit Playground Expresses with a class I think and um, so making sounds or music or what something so mm -hmm. A whole bunch of things. And then thanks to a whole bunch of people, Aplio, Deshi Poop, Maker, Melissa, Jerry, Lady Ada, Katni, Barbador, Brent, and some other people I have forgotten for all kinds of, there's still a lot of fast and furious library work that's going on for Pi Portal and in general. And uh, it's amazing how much work is happening in parallel right now. That's what I was to say. Okay. Yeah, totally. Thanks. Thank you so much, Dan, and everybody who, Dan 
shout it out to. Okay, uh, Day of Estels is lurking, so we'll go to Deshipu. I can't hear ya. Can anybody else hear him? I say I need to have the tab active. There you go. Yeah, sorry. Uh, okay, so thank you to Dan and uh, everybody involved in fixing the file system issues. I've been watching this uh, issue with, with fascination and I'm seeing things I would, myself, I would never be able to debug. So it's really, really, really cool to, to see all this work doing being done in the open and also the effect of having a stable circuit python is <laughs> cannot be overstated uh, thank you to scott for the for the uh, stream uh, for the streaming it was really fun to watch uh, and uh, it's really nice to see the progress on the game boy project uh, and uh, thank you to maker melissa for for the all the comments to the, on the all the work on the drivers uh, for circuit python that's it awesome thank you Dishipu. all right jerry hi uh is this mic working okay yep sounds good all right um yeah well thanks to, to scott this the, the live stream was fun to watch I, I had to leave before the the game boy part but uh it was fun nice thanks for doing that mm -hmm. And uh, and then to Dan and, and and all the people again who, who spent a lot of time uh, working on the file system issue, um, really nice to see that that come to a resolution. And um, and then uh, and then again and also thanks to everybody who got the circumpython.org site up and running. That's really really nice. Um, and Brent, uh, the Zap Mail guide was really fun. Uh, nice to get it working. Had a little little hiccup when I tried it, but now it's working great. Fun to do. Perfect, and thank you for testing it. I, I've had that same experience with you, Jerry, and it's very, very helpful. Um, even if it, it means we have to release a beta five real quick, it's good to <laughs> good to get the uh, the bugs fixed. Yeah. So thanks. All right, uh, Katni. Hello. So first and foremost, I want to give a hug report to my friend Brian for uh, being the other set of hands in. Uh, <laughs> soldering time lapse. Um, we soldered for almost six hours this weekend and did up almost 100 or over 160 boards um, in prep for PyCon. Uh, last year, we were very limited on, on Python work because we didn't have hardware to work on the libraries. Um, and I wanted to eliminate that this year um, and have hardware available so that we can actually go through the library issues and have as much Python work available as is at all possible. Um, and so uh, that was what I that was what I did over the weekend. Um, so thanks to Brian for for helping out with that. Um, that was really great of him. Um, a hug report to Maker Melissa for continuing to do phenomenal work and being so flexible with suggestions. We keep um, coming up with uh, changes, and Melissa just rolls with it um and that's been really great uh to dan for rocking the bug fixes and the release this weekend and uh just a group hug to everyone who's been supporting the community testing the current releases working with circuit python and to all the people contributing to the libraries uh thank you very much um we would not be able to do what we're doing without you and uh it's just been great to see all the contributions and we really appreciate it and that's what i have Awesome. Thank you so much, Katni. All right. King of North is lurking. Uh, Maker Melissa already dropped by. Mr. Certainly is also lurking. So last but not least, we have Summersoft. Hello. Whoa. <laughs> Always a pleasure to hear your voice. <laughs> All right. And of course, it's a week that I don't have a whole lot. So nobody else has to read it. Um, no worries. So first, uh, thanks to Dan for help with understanding uh, the NRFX drivers and how they work. Um, leaving ASF4 was fun but confusing. <laughs> uh, Scott for the release in Game Boy live stream. It's always a pleasure to watch. Uh, and then just a group hug beyond that. Really awesome work this weekend to watch. Awesome. Thank you so much, Summersoft. Happy to have you in the uh, meeting here. Um, happy to be. Sweet. 
Okay, let's move on to status updates. Um, status updates is done as a round robin as well, uh, where we each get a chance to talk about the work that we've been doing. And this could be whatever you've built with CircuitPython lately or uh, the things that you may have changed about CircuitPython or a library or whatever. So uh, we want to hear all things related to what you're working on. Um, we've heard bathroom remodel updates as well. So like pretty much everything's fair game. Um, as long as it's family friendly, of course. Uh, we'll do this as a round robin, and I'll start it just like um, like I did last time. So, uh, we'll take a time code. Uh, did beta four live stream on Friday, followed with Game Boy stuff. Um, accidentally showed some credentials and revoked them, which was great. Except I turned turns out I broke a few things. Um, so I am fixing the things I broke today, uh, by revoking those credentials. I will give, be giving everything independent credentials so that when I, if I accidentally show my testing credentials, I won't have to fix other things again, uh, lesson learned. But in general, like it could be much, much worse. I could have like, if we had the same credentials for all the driver check checks and stuff, like it would have been way, way worse. So, uh, this is good practice. Um, the, I did record the live stream and for those of you who haven't, uh, didn't watch it when I did it, uh, that will go up, uh, on the Adafruit, uh, YouTube channel. It's available on my Twitch channel now just from their recording. And then, uh, it's also, I, I probably put it on my personal, uh, YouTube channel as well. So, uh, you should be able to find it shortly. I'll, I think I'll throw the link in the notes, uh, in the Adafruit daily that goes out tomorrow morning as well so um if you're not subscribed to the python for microcontrollers newsletter i highly recommend it there's a, just a bunch of great stuff every week uh that's in that newsletter if you like writing newsletters we could always use contributors to that as well um like all of the circuit python stuff we do it's done out in the open um to su subscribe to that you go to adafruitdaily.com and uh, check the python for microcontrollers box there um so that's going up uh, I broke Adabot and I also broke the build board info script. So I will be fixing both of those and maybe keep an eye out, an eye out, or let me know if you know of anything else that's broken because of like login issues. It's probably because I revoked that key. Um, after that, I'll be doing uh, bug hunting for 4.0. Uh, Dan's been kicking butt on the file system stuff. So I'll likely look at some of the USB issues that have cropped up, um, in 4.0, we have a new USB stack, so it's not unheard of that uh, that we'll uh, need to fine-tune that to get it working on some machines. I uh, just ordered a Teensy because our tester uses a Teensy USB host um, and then uses that to test, and that hasn't been working. So uh, I'll take a look at that as well. Um, and then I'm out on Friday and Monday uh, for a quick trip to Michigan for a family birthday uh, over the weekend. So... It will be a bit of a short week this week and next, um, but really not that short because they're, they'll both be four days. So should get lots done still. Um, and I, I am talking with Damien tomorrow too. So uh, we'll just have our kind of our normal sync up then uh, unless unless he's too busy, which he's working on getting his PyBoard D stuff out. So I wouldn't be surprised if we waited till next week to do that. Um, all right, uh, TG Techie. Hello, can you Hello. hear me? Yep. Um, so uh, this week, partially because it's the first school project, because I haven't been doing it, I dug into documentation. Hmm. And um, it's not done, but it is up online and live what is done. Nice. And it's on our website, if I put it to the channel. That... Um, for the GUI, it's auto-generating using Jekyll and Python with a little Python script I wrote to document Python, which I thought was fun. You can get Sphinx to work and school deadlines. Uh -huh. But, um, yeah. So, uh, I think we're losing you. That's, that's what I did. Awesome. Thanks, TG Techie. Thank you all. All right. We'll make sure and have that link in the notes, too. Thank you, Katni. I assume Katni is the anonymous 
Orox. <laughs> Google Docs is fun. Um, all right. Uh, thanks, TG Techie. Let's go to Brent. Hello. Hello. In the past week, I wrote a new guide um, for the learning system. It turned your Pi portal into an interactive display that you can email. And lots of fun with that. Um, Jerry has tried it already. It's a pretty easy guide. <laughs> Um, if you're just getting started with Adafruit IO and want to really just like power it up with integrations. Um, working on a Pi Portal Smart Thermostat guide um, for this week, probably published by the end of this week. And this is the first time I'm saying it publicly, we've started development on a new Adafruit IO API documentation. It supports CircuitPython. And it's kind of exciting to me because um, we'll, we're doing code snippets for CircuitPython and Arduino and Python as well. So it's going to support everything and it's a full rewrite of how we're doing it. And it will have the MQTT API, which isn't documented. Mm. And Jerry might be like one of the few people really excited about this, but <laughs> I'm excited because um, I've kind of been watching how CircuitPython.org is being developed. Mm. And this is going to be similar. It's all in Markdown. It's easy to contribute to. So I'm mm -hmm. kind of taking the CircuitPython community feedback and what people like contributing to here and trying to apply that to IO. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Brent. Okay, yep. Carter is lurking, so we'll go to see Grover, who's text only. And I'll read it off. Uh, said, uh, finish the quote unquote classic MIDI UART library. Uh, John Park sex successfully tested it on a couple of his unique DIY MIDI controllers. Uh, coupled it with my range slicer library to quantize potentiometer settings into MIDI control and note codes. Was completely distracted by Pi Portal, Portal projects this week. Uh, customized the weather station project and used it as an excuse to dive deeper into CircuitPython coding. Of course, uh, not I have a lot. Uh, now I have a lot more questions to ask. Uh, thanks again to everyone for their patience. Uh, second thing is, uh, over the next week, I'll be moving most of my development project archives uh, into GitHub now that I'm dangerously quasi-knowledgeable. <laughs> I think that's the like final state when it comes to Git, uh, is uh, dangerously quasi-knowledgeable. Um, C. Grover says, I'll continue to wrap up the test of the nonlinear range slicer library algorithms, and I will finally send the PCB off to Oshpark uh, if Port PyPortal doesn't call to me. Uh, my weather station needs to play some wave files of our local weather person's glib remarks at appropriate intervals. <laughs> awesome. See, Grover, that sounds great. Okay, uh, Charles is lurking, so we'll go to Dan. Okay, um, a bunch of bug fixes. On the 52A40, there's a, this nice high-speed SPI interface, but unfortunately it doesn't work when you use it with BLE at the same time. So. Uh, we disabled that so we wouldn't get crashes. Um, we've already talked about the file system corruption issues um, on uh, Pi Portal and other boards. That's been fixed in beta 5. There was an issue, as I mentioned, that on the 52840, if you don't have external flash, like on the little dongle board, that um, uh, Nordic cells. Uh, an internal file system, there were some issues there. There was a, some caching going on and it wasn't being flushed properly. Hmm. Um, courtesy of Kevin Walters, I fixed one problem with PWM out and I'm going to be continuing to work on that uh, for smooth transitions between uh, duty cycle changes and we'll continue to knock off the 4.0 bugs as they come in, which they still are coming in at a good rate. So that's mm -hmm. good because are trying it which is very good okay yeah and that's it's getting it. more stable right like we're moving it is, in the right direction yes yes i think that it's it it is we, we are getting more stable which is really good yeah and the website is getting that too which is very exciting so yeah uh thanks i really like for, it. yeah thanks for all your all your work on all of that dan and sure. everybody of course you're welcome um okay uh Dave was lurking, but also wrote some stuff in the text chat. So I'm going to assume he wants me to read it off. Um, interrupt me if you want to read it, Dave. Uh, Dave said, uh, I wrote a logging library for CircuitPython based on C Pythons, uh, but much simpler. Uh, like C Pythons, it 
uses pluggable message handlers for publishing. Guide should be live soon with sample handlers for UART file and Adafruit IO on the Pi portal. Uh, Star Trek The Next Generation inspired Alarm Clock and CircuitPython is nearing completion as well. Just waiting on final case design from Noe and Pedro. All right, and we'll go to Dishabu. Uh, okay, so uh, the Pew Pew boards now have uh, their own mailing list, and uh, it's uh, Pew Pew at uh, python.org. Nice. Uh, so the, there are like eight people subscribed already, but mm -hmm. uh, not much traffic. I, I need to write a welcome email mm -hmm. for everyone. Uh, next up, uh, I also tra I, I checked uh, the firmware that is uh, that you can download from the circuitpython.org for Pew Pew and for micro game. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm happy to report that the one for Pew Pew works perfectly well. The one for your game was missing the frozen uh, libraries, basically, the frozen Python libraries mm -hmm. that uh, I need. So I made a pull request with those. Okay. Hopefully uh, that that can be added in there. Yeah, and, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look today at it later. Thank you. I had to go through it, it's, it's nothing. Uh, it's nothing urgent, obviously. Yeah. And uh, finally, there was, oh, right, uh, over the weekend, I, I worked a little bit uh, trying to design a, <clears throat> a feather wing for a capacitive gesture sensor mm -hmm. clip that I've seen mentioned in here. Hmm. Uh, I'm in rear, and I decided, decided to <clears throat> try my hand at it. We will see if I got the antenna design right and so on. So it's a mm -hmm. bit of a completely new territory for me. Uh, analog signals and so on. We will see how that works. Interesting. I'm excited to see it. That's, yeah, that's it. Thanks. All right, uh, Jerry. Um, yeah, so I spent a bunch of time playing with the beta four and beta five uh, releases and getting really good at reloading the file system. And, Reflashing it, <laughs> oh. and then uh, and then and then spent 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 a lot of time uh, updating various libraries for the uh, the uh, API change in in Display IO, and uh, just kept stumbling. It seems like every time I wanted to try something new, it it, it was one of the ones that used it. So <laughs> um, it was a it was it was a simple fix, but it just it needed to be done in a bunch of places. So hopefully we got them all. But if 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 you do get type errors trying to to on uh, calls to a uh, tile grid, it's just because it needs to have that one little fix. Mm -hmm. So it's it's quick and easy, but it just needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, similarly, there was a there was a little change in the API for the ESP32 SPI AIO post example that 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 headers a lot of originally we had to wrap everything in a bytes wrapper with a and and that's been changed, but it didn't catch up. So one of the guides was broken and. Uh, it just seemed like it, there were I think, two people over the, during the last week that ran into that, so finally got that fixed. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that was that was the week. Awesome, thanks, Jerry. Okay, Katni. Hello. Uh, so last week I finished the BMP three eight eight guide. Uh, I designed a single potentiometer breakout. It's I squared C um, from start to finish. That's shipped out for a proto run. Fixed a couple of issues on product guides. I started the CircuitPython library for the TPA2016. I think it's mostly done. Um, I just have to test actual audio with it. Um, and then uh, this weekend, which I already mentioned, uh, I had a six hour soldering marathon, um, which I included the link in the notes to the time lapse video for that. Uh, this week, uh, be fixed. the first thing I'm gonna do is be fixing a motor kit servo kit I squared C bug um, that we saw in all of the um, feather wings as well, so that should be a pretty easy fix. Um, finish the library for the TPA2016. I need to start the AD8495 guide, and then um, also start designing the dual potentiometer version of the I squared C breakout, um, which uh, is the next thing, um, next board that I will be designing. Uh, and that is what is currently on my list. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Katni. Uh, King or North is lurking. Uh, Mr. Certainly is lurking. And we already heard maker Melissa. So uh, we'll go to Summersoft. 
Hello, hello. Hello. Uh, so I put, um, I started working on Dean M's Mixer Voice a couple weeks ago, but mm -hmm. uh, since we're going to do that in 5X, I kind of put that on hold for now. Um, and then in an effort to kind of speed 4X along, I started working on PDM N for the NRF. Nice. Um, I've got it. I've got it compiling, and it is at least activating the PDM peripheral. Um, but it it does after having, as previously mentioned, having Dan kind of help me understand how the NRFX NRFX um, driver system is working. Um, I do still have to do manage the DMA pointers for the peripheral, um, so it's still kind of working through that. Um, I think I noticed something that's been bogging me down at least the immediate obstacle uh, this morning, and I'll be testing that this afternoon. Awesome. And that's what I plan on pushing through for this week. Great. Thank you, Summersoft. Yep. Uh, thank you for always picking up the those awesome things. I really appreciate it. Well, I appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. We got lots of opportunities. <laughs> I, I'm, always, I'm always punching above my weight class. So Keep on doing it. You got it. All right. And with that, that's uh, status updates. Um, that is the fourth out of five sections. Uh, the last thing we have is our in the weeds section, which is a chance for us to just chat about whatever we want to chat about. Um, really great for m maybe more in-depth uh, discussions on things. Um, and uh, the way it works is if you have a topic um, and you haven't done this already, uh, please put it in the text chat. We'll snag it and come to you. Um, and then, uh, we have a couple, so we'll, we'll, we'll go over that as well. Um, all right. Uh, we'll start with Jerry. Um, yeah, you may have already answered this one, but uh, so I noticed that, that a couple of questions came in over the weekend on some help that, uh, it, um, Adafruit IO, uh, is in the, it is, it, it's in the bundle library list or uh, helper list, but it's not in the bundle. And so I was surprised. I think uh, Dr. Brendan went in on Friday. Mm -hmm. But did Adabot not run over the weekend because you broke it, or because that would be my guess? Okay. But I do. So, I, I love the idea of Adabot getting the weekend off. <laughs> <laughs> so so maybe it, it just it just missed the opportunity to get out before it. it so I just wanted to make sure it, it was getting in there. It wasn't some other problem holding it up. Uh yeah, I believe I believe it's it's probably just those shared credentials that I revoked. Um, okay. So I'll so. I'll take a look at that this afternoon, and I should be able to actually poke Adabot and, and get that to run. Okay. So I did I did check to see that it's it's you know, it's in the directory. And, okay. And the just it just didn't get built in the last build, or it must have missed the missed the Friday build and when it went in. I know the yeah it missed the Friday build. Yeah. Mm, right. And then I broke it for Saturday. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll take a, I'll clean up my mess uh, the rest today. Um, no problem. I kind of figured. I kind of figured when I revoked that that like, I hoped it was just mine, but I kind of knew that it might have leaked out other places. So um, it's good practice, uh, and we'll get it going again. It was good to see that lots of you know several people were using were using that library. So uh, you know, and it good to see it's in demand. Right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. We'll. Uh, I'll get that fixed up today. Um, all right, and lastly, we have Charles. Well, my problem is, is I'm trying to run a standard five pin DIN MIDI out okay. of the Raspberry Pi, and I, uh, and it's just it's coming up garbage, you know, garbage. Uh, when I watch it from the other end, mm -hmm. and the only thing I can think of is that the baud rate is not right. Now, I sort of remember something about not being able, Raspberry Pi, not being able to deal with that thir that odd 31 to 50 baud rate. Right. Am I correct about that? I, I have a similar inkling as you do that they can't do that baud rate. I just saw C. Grover was typing, so I was hoping they would confirm that, but um, I believe that's the case. Because it's frustrating. Because uh, because I got a, I got my I got my ocarina working through MIDI USB, but I really also like to be able to 
to get it going through the five pin din because I have a couple of old uh, sound boxes that I'd love to, you know, be able to play around with on the uh, Raspberry Pi. I, have you have you tried a, a USB to MIDI adapter? They're not very expensive, like ten or twelve dollars, something. So. I'll look into that. Uh, I'll look into yeah, that. I have I have one that I bought years ago, and they're really common. Yeah, so yeah, because it's very, it's it's just that close <laughs> to working, you know. And I think I I'm I have uh, I'm running my ocarina. Ba uh, I'm trying to run my ocarina on uh, basically on uh, the previous version. I haven't tried it on stretch yet. Mm. I think I think think that's the next thing I'm going to try before I go to the hardware solution because if it, they may have changed something in the uh, system to allow more baud rates, I haven't tried that yet. I would try googling it from the like Raspberry Pi side as well. Yeah. Um, and and don't worry about the Circuit Python side. Just see like if people have done MIDI with Raspberry Pi if you haven't done that already. Yeah. That's it. It, I just like the idea that my project was done in Circuit Python. I know, right? But uh, I like to uh, I like to to do everything I want from Circuit Python. I know, I know, right? Every, we're we're spoiling everybody with how awesome uh, Circuit Python is. I even, Amen. I even managed to get a a Metro M4 to talk MIDI. Uh huh. Which means, which means the next next trick is to make a cup multi octave keyboard. You know. Yeah. Vanilla keyboard. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually. I've got a. Yeah, it's Python, of course. Yep. I've. I've got a. I've got an old Yamaha portable keyboard that I want to intercept the, the key matrix for and make it MIDI in and out as well. How about? How about putting the matrix through a uh, 23, a couple of 23017? I don't know what those are. Uh, to, um, MCP 23017s, uh, 017s, uh, uh, it's a 60, it gives you, it takes, uh, it's a I squared C device that will give you two uh, 60 extra IO pins. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With two of those, you could probably make a, 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 a matrix more than adequate to yep. drive that key. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I, I should actually count the pins. My plan was to do um, probably just a grand central to prototype with, and then. Yeah, that could that could be work too. I would I actually guess... like to design a SAMD SAMD fifty one board that actually has like explicit like byte plugs that you can put into so it's like eight pins that are all right next to each other on the port peripheral um mm -hmm. that would be great yeah i think that would be cool <laughs> it would save aggravation it would save a lot of aggravation trying to wire the thing in yeah i to me it's almost like a like you create a modular plug that goes right into the uh plugs right into the pit uh into the sockets yeah Par I think you come. Pretty, I think you can come pretty close to that with the Grand Central. Yeah, I think so too. It's just that like the Grand Central doesn't have them ordered in port order. Like it's really just a matter of like how you label it and and everything. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for for the idea. I think I'll. I've got two possibilities that might make it easier. Perfect. It's just nice. To, the The idea of having five pinned in working would be wonderful because i've got i've got things like the i got a i got an fb01 that is all is five pinned in mm -hmm. you know just to just to name a cut one right i've got a couple of boxes like that that you know just sit there fallow because i've been using usb for for a lot of stuff right then a number one lazy to wire up a a circuit board or buy a circuit board that has has a MIDI in and a MIDI out and a MIDI through. Mm -hmm. MIDI through is easy. Right. 
Cool. Okay. Well, thank you for the MIDI update. Yeah. Uh, good luck with getting the Raspberry Pi happy with it. Yeah. You know, so a quick follow up on the Raspberry Pi thing is that one of the real beauties that I that I think is occurring now is that you can you really freely mix native Raspberry Pi stuff Python with Circuit Python, hmm. and that's I think really powerful. So, you know, when you when you have something that's, that's working on the Pi, but you want you have some some sensors that, and things like that that they are working with Circuit Python, you can easily blend the two together, and that I find that's really nice. Yeah, you can run two. You can run a, a circuit Python program that talks via sockets or any number of uh, interfaces. Well, I mean the same. It, it, you can mix them right in the same Python script. I mean, it doesn't. It, the Python doesn't know if you're, you know, just what you what you import. Right. Yeah. On the Raspberry yeah, Pi. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's you know, it, it, there, the the driver... it's just a Python script that happens to you know call you know you can import in Python circuit Python modules, but it's. I think it's really a nice, nice feature. It's a, it's a just an added by a nice, pleasant by byproduct of using a language that already exists mm -hmm. and building it for microcontrollers. It doesn't have to necessarily be on a microcontroller, right? To work. Yep. Totally. That's, that's the that's dream. Wonder, that's the wonder of Blinka. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Blinka layer and other uh, sort of things you're doing. Thank you. Totally. Thanks, Thank Charles, you. and thanks, Jerry, for that as well. Uh, with that, we'll wrap up. Um, this has been the Circuit Python weekly meeting for uh, Monday, March 18th, uh, 2019. Uh, we do this every Monday. It's, uh, except if it's a U.S. holiday. Uh, if it's a U.S. holiday, we'll tend to do it on uh, Tuesday instead. Uh, we post in the text channel of CircuitPython uh, about any changes to the schedule. So join our Discord at adafru.it slash Discord to join us um, there every week. Everybody is welcome to participate in the meeting. Um the meeting is recorded, so be aware of that. And it's available uh, same day on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit. Um, it's also available on Diode Zone from time to time. And uh, it's available as a podcast on a lot of different podcast services, so check that out as well. Uh, that's audio only, of course, so um, thank you to listening to us there. Uh, check out the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter uh, at adafruitdaily.com. Um, we have links to these recordings along with a whole bunch of other links to awesome Python stuff that's happening in the world. Um, so I highly recommend it. And uh, with that, uh, thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll chat with everybody on the Discord and uh, talk with you uh, over voice next week. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.